ABC, it's Green Air. Time for an update. Uh, been a little while. Uh, got a few things here to show, and might just kind of keep this video going and tack some stuff onto the end as I'm adding or listening to stuff and uh, adding, you know, add it to the video. So I don't know. We'll see how it goes. All right, what's playing in the background? Uh, it's kind of a blind buy. Uh, ran into a sale. It's Robin Danger on CD here. It's like a late 80s, I think into the early 90s, U.S. metal band. And I haven't, uh, I'd never heard of these, heard of this band, female fronted. And uh, it's on Storm Spell reissue. But digging it so far. I don't know a lot about it yet. I need to research it a little bit. Alright, kind of jump into the vinyl here. Out digging and just came across this like real cheap. A couple bucks or something. Never heard of this band actually. Easy action. It's a uh, I guess call it an EP. It's from 1984. It's got four songs on it. Uh, they're from Sweden, <clears throat> and I actually kind of reached out to uh, Brother George, and he was like, yeah, I've heard of them. Uh, the singer is uh, Zinni Zan, <clears throat> and I'm like, no shit, and Zinni Zan was basically the original singer from uh, Shotgun Messiah, so I'm assuming that's him here in the middle. Looks a little different here. Uh... Easy Action did some research on them. The first band from Sweden to sign to a major label in the U.S. and they signed to uh, Sire. Looks like they put out an album or two, and it kind of you know dissolved. And uh, Zinni went on to uh, Shotgun Messiah, and I don't even think he was on all the Shotgun albums. I think uh, Tim Skoll did vocals on maybe the last one or something. But, uh, but Tim Skull was, I think, on all of the Shotgun Messiahs, if I remember correctly, who started out as Kingpin. <clears throat> and now that has me wondering if uh, Zinni Zan's on that. Anyways, now my head's going all over the place. But now this dude is in uh, Zan Clan, Zin Clan. I can't remember the name. That's his own band now. And it's been around for a while. But this is okay. Not as good as I thought it would be, actually. But, uh,. Now that I, I've got some information on them, I want to go back and give us another spin. Let's do it a couple times when I first got it. I was like, eh, it's okay for what it is, but maybe it'll make a little more sense now. I'll go back and check it out. Uh, next, Stray Dog. A uh, band out of Denver. This is from 73, just a killer hard rock album. <clears throat> and it's uh it's a textured almost feels like leather the album cover and this thing's pretty beat up but the vinyl is like perfect condition so I grabbed it uh, and it was mega cheap I actually have another copy of this and I might kind of Frankenstein it and you know, put the, this vinyl with the other album cover really good uh, 70s hard rock uh, Kind of bluesy a little bit, I guess, but just good hard rock. This was a blind buy, and it was cheap, so I grabbed it, and I really ended up digging this. I dropped the needle on it at the uh, record shop. Yeah, they got a listening station, so I listened to it a second. I was like, it's pretty interesting. It's Country Coalition, uh, time to get it together. Like 1970, 71, I think it's around 70. Uh, it's on uh, ABC Bluesway, and it's just a oh, <laughs> it's just a uh, hippie country rock kind of to me is what I hear. Uh, a little bit of the '60s still mixed in with it, but what was coming soon to come from California, you know, with uh, the Eagles and all that stuff. But I'll show you the label. Way. Cool album. Very good listen, man. 
And like I say, it was cheap and it's in fantastic condition. So I picked it up. This blew my mind finding this and uh, it wasn't cheap, but I, <coughs> excuse me, I went ahead and grabbed it because I'll probably never ever see this again anywhere. So, And I can't pronounce the name of the album, but here you go. And it's the Kimo Kusunimi Band. These guys are from Finland. And it's actually uh, Sarcophagus, their third album. Something was going on uh, label-wise, contract-wise, or whatever. So they didn't call this album Sarcophagus. They went by the guitar player's name, called it his band. But uh, interesting, uh, one of the very early, if not first, Finnish heavy metal bands. Uh, from what I've read, this is the very first heavy metal album from Finland that's sung in Finnish. It's not in English. And the reason this kind of caught my eye was I saw this reissued not long ago. And you know, I was going through a used bin at a shop uh, the day after uh, record store day. And uh, I, didn't, I don't really go out on record, record store day. It's just not really too into it and don't you know, want to fight the crowd. So I go out the day after, and, you know. And I look through the record store day stuff. If there's anything cool, I'll pick it up. If not, no big deal. But I always go through the used stuff because most shops have sales going on. Which, you know, this shop had a sale. And I pulled this out. And actually a couple other things that I don't have in this stack yet that really blew my mind. Uh, one in particular. But uh, this, if I hadn't seen that reissue, I wouldn't even know what the hell this was. But really cool, actually. I mean... Yeah, yes, it's not in English, but it's yeah, that doesn't really bother me. I'm a huge Japanese metal fan, you know, 80s Japanese metal, so I'm used to listening to stuff not in English. Next up, a high roller reissue, or not really a reissue, I guess, but uh, Storm Child, just early recordings, uh, new wave of British heavy metal band, and the label. It's got a couple different recordings from like 79 and 80. These are early, you know. Uh, really cool. You know, kind of... It's just that era, man. It's what high roller reissues. They find, you know, some band, that new wave British heavy metal band that put out a single and that was it. And they'll go back and find demos and live recordings and just, you know... Uh, recordings of the singer being born, whatever. I don't know how they find this shit. It's amazing. That's a really cool, man. You know, high roller. They do it right. Next up, I picked this up. Uh, found it on sale day after record store day. And I don't know if this was a record store day release from a while back or whatever, but it's uh, Rodriguez coming from reality. I've been wanting to get some of this because I finally picked this up, the movie, Searching for uh, Sugar Man. And yeah, I came across this. You can pick this up now on Blu-ray for like 10 bucks or something. And worth every penny. This is a killer story. I mean, even if you don't like this guy's music, this is freaking amazing that what happened to this guy. So, you know. Anyways got the movie, the documentary, and wanted to hear some more, so he basically did two albums, this is his second album, and, you know, you just gotta check him out, it's like a, a Bob Dylan-ish at times, and then there's some more upbeat stuff, but his lyrics are really, you know, pretty uh, heavy, really interesting stuff, and I actually have the soundtrack for the uh, documentary, but I haven't cracked it open yet. Uh, need to find the first album now. <laughs> this is kind of a blind buy. Brains. I think it's kind of newer. Uh, it's limited to 500. This is number 214 on uh, Sarlacc Productions. It's pretty cool. It's kind of that 
you know, hard rock with a 70s tinge to it. But just good hard rock, modern hard rock. Not radio hard rock, but just, you know. It, it was interesting. It wasn't real expensive, so I grabbed it. Really dig it, I'll hang on to it. Don't know a lot about them. Right, this is kind of kind of weird. Uh, I've been in uh, wanting to check out some more funk, and then uh, Aaron Metal Theo <laughs> uh, did a video about funk for hard rock uh, jerk offs like me. So in that he showed. Uh, a funky ink. No, he showed that in a different video. But anyways, he was showing funk for people that are into hard rock, and that was a very interesting video. And I've been kind of getting in, back into a, a wanting to find more funk. You know, I kind of go in, you know, waves. A couple years ago, I was picking up funk like crazy, trying to. Anyway. But I came across this band, Funk Ink. Never heard of them. It just looked cool. Uh, chicken licking. And then, like a video or two later, uh, Aaron shows another Funk Inc. album. And I'm like, holy crap, man. Why didn't you show that in the, the other one? But I think he had just picked it up. But anyways, <laughs> really cool, man. Totally digging this band. And I actually have one other one. This is a reissue. Uh, I have one other reissue from them. I just don't have it in a stack for whatever reason. But I totally dug both albums. And... I want to get that one Aaron was showing. So, if you dig uh, Funk, you know, Funk Incorporated, man. <laughs> That's good. And I was pulling out some blues the other day. Uh, James Cotton Band Live and On the Move. Double Live album. Just kicks ass. James Cotton. Yeah. Come on, man. Harmonica Master. Harp Master. And another James Cotton band, 100% cotton. It's kind of cool, I left the price sticker on it. I mean, I can't remember when I picked this up. It's been three or four years, maybe five years ago, for $1.99 at Princeton Record Exchange, up in Princeton, New Jersey. But, uh, cool album. Then I put out some Jimmy Reed. What is this on? Up front. I don't think there's anything on the back. Yeah. Same thing. Huh? This is really cool. Mighty Joe Young. Knew nothing about this dude. I got this at Princeton also for two bucks. Very interesting. Really good uh, dude out of uh, Chicago. And I think he was, uh, you know, 60s into the 70s. I remember reading all this, but I can't remember everything about it. It's a cool album. And actually, when we were up in that area, uh, Waukegan is where we stayed, north of Chicago, and it mentions where he played a lot up around in there. It's like, wow, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, we're right around that area. And that's it for the stack. Uh, like I said, I might keep this going. Right, here's one I've been waiting on. It's been out for a couple months, I guess. The uh, High Roller. When I saw this was coming out, it was like, sweet. Uh, it finally popped up in the U.S. on the site, so I grabbed it. It's a Storm Queen. Basically, uh, early 80s, like 80, 81, 82, somewhere around in there. Uh, New Wave British Heavy Metal Band. And this is basically all they put out was a single. And this uh, is the demos, and the single actually comes with a high roller version of the original single. Uh, this is 250 copies on colored vinyl and 250 copies on black vinyl. And I have the black vinyl. And this is, they're all hand numbered. I got number four. That's like the lowest I've ever gotten on a hand numbered album. And here's the back. 
and it comes with a killer book, like 12 pages or something. So I'm actually getting ready to dig into this. It's like the second spin on it, but I haven't read the book yet. I'm getting ready to do that now. But digging the hell out of this. All right, so I'm spinning this again. And yeah, it's still pretty cheesy. But I grabbed these out real quick. And like I said, uh, I'll show you a couple things kind of go along with this. Uh, Zinni Zan, singer in Easy Action, went on to be with uh, Shotgun Messiah. Before Shotgun Messiah came to the States, they were Kingpin. And this was their first album, Welcome to Bop City. Crazy cover. Uh, Zinni Zan here, but he was he's Zinni Zan. And then you have Tim Scold, who's Tim Tim. And this band had an incredible guitar player, Harry K. Cody. Dude is freaking phenomenal. Uh, to cheese cover. But, they come to the U.S., same album, just mixed up the tracks a little bit. And they become Shotgun Messiah. Uh, a little more respectable cover, I guess you could say. And this is a fantastic album. If you've never heard Shotgun Messiah, man, check them out. This is like 88, 89. I don't know. Let's see the year. 89. Uh, their second album, I don't have on vinyl, but uh, it's called Second Coming. I have on CD. Another killer album. Tim Scold kind of taking over a little more, I think. And Tim Scold ended up in the 90s, like, being part of that industrial thing, you know, or whatever. He was in there with, uh, I think he was in Front 242 or something to do with them. He was with Manson for a while, writing, and I don't know, he was just in that whole scene. Uh, then there was a third album, and it was basically Tim Scold and uh, the guitar player, uh, Cody. And that one totally kind of went, uh, where it was going towards that industrial rock sound of the 90s or whatever. And uh, actually, I don't even have that. I don't have it on anything. I wasn't a big fan of that album. If I came across it today on CD or vinyl, of course, I'd pick it up. But at the time, I wasn't a big fan of it. Uh, but just thought I'd show you these real quick. How crazy, you know. Same album, different cover. This uh, 88 originally came out in Sweden and then the U.S. in 89. So. And before that was easy action. <laughs> Still cheesy, but uh, part of the history. I love this stuff. All right, real quick, I thought I'd show you some uh, singles I've gotten in lately. And uh, still listening to the Storm Queen record here. But uh, some of these are older New Wave British Heavy Metal singles, but they're reissues. And most of them I'd never heard. So, and all of them really pretty freaking killer. This first one is Berlin. It's on a uh, high roller. Uh, here's a new one. This is uh, a split with Dead Lord and Black Trip. And they're each doing a cover. I think uh, Dead Lord does a Witch Fine song and Black Trip does a Riot song. And they both kill it on this. This is a really good single. Uh, not much on the back there. Just an explosion. Another uh, New Wave British Heavy Metal reissue thing here. Mirage, Blind Fury. Band. All these, you know, early to mid 80s. Night Vision, Breaking the Chains. Really dug this one. The 
weekend on High Roller. Uh, this I may have shown before. It's a reissue of a single from uh, Kiss. They were a French band. Kind of have that new wave British heavy metal sound to it. And this is brand new. Lucifer. It's the singer from uh, The Oath. Her new band. Uh, single just come out. I think the full length comes out in uh, May or June. And just that occult kind of metal, kind of just like Oath was, but uh, I don't know, a little doomier maybe sounding on this. But uh, very cool. Can't wait to hear the full length. And here's the band. Alright, playing in the background, Stone, the debut album. This is a U.S. pressing with a different cover. A mechanic, right? This is like 88. 1988 killer album from uh, Finland. Uh, pretty sure this is my only record store day released thing I picked up this year. It's a 10 inch from Blackberry Smoke. Uh, Blackberry Smoke, man. Uh, love them. The last album, the new album, I'm still on the fence on that one and it's not because of the songs it's because of the production and, and I actually want to get it on CD because I've heard it online and it sounds better than the vinyl so we shall see but this is pretty cool it's a uh, acoustic uh, what is it six tracks five originals and then they do a Tom Waits cover so sounds good so Blackberry Smoke. Alright, next. Uh, this album is... I just got it yesterday, day before. Day or two ago. Uh, started spinning it this morning and got stuck on side one. Probably spun side one four times before I went on to side two. But, uh... Killer. It's actor. Paranoia. Uh, this is on High Roller. Just came out, and kind of a uh, wow. There's so much going on in here. It's very simple, hard rock, but different. It's uh, like I hear some BOC in it, and I hear some 80s in it, and it's just this is a fantastic record, and it's actually. Uh, like a project band between a couple dudes in Finland and a band called Circle, which I admit I know nothing about, and uh, a guy named Chris Black, or Professor Black, he goes by, also, uh, he's out of Chicago, and he's a busy guy, he's also the main guy behind High Spirits, and what's the other, he's... I think he has something to do with Super Christ, uh, Dawn Bringer, I think is the other band, which I've never heard either. But, <clears throat> anyways, I love uh, Chris Black's vocals. They're just really clean, uh, very melodic, really good stuff. If you dig uh, High Spirits, you like this album, give this a shot. It's a little different, but it's still very melodic. Uh, it's a touch, uh, I want to say progressive, but not over the top. There's just like some different stuff going on in here. But Blue Oyster Cult comes to mind a lot for me on this. Very cool. Uh, highly recommended. <laughs> uh, next up. Just a couple more things. I uh, found this day after record store day last week. It popped up in the used bin. It was like, uh, what the hell is this? It's Japanese, definitely, but I'm not sure what it is. So I pulled out and I'm looking at it. It's a double live album. And it's all in Japanese here in the top, but real small, like tiny, tiny small, written right here in the red is the word lazy. 
and which <coughs> bells went off when I saw that. Basically, lazy kind of turned into uh, loudness. So this is from 81. A couple members went on after this band to be in uh, loudness. And kind of the main one, you know, Akira, the guitar player. And this is uh, much more of a, uh, just kind of a hard rock, almost poppy at times, uh, band. Comes with a little insert. And as soon as I figured out who it was, I was like, hell yeah. Grab that. I have one other Lazy album, which I should have grabbed and shown here, but I forgot. Maybe I'll do that right now. Alright, this is the uh, only other Lazy I have on vinyl. And this is 1980, so uh, basically a year before this live album. And like I said, a couple of these dudes went on to be in uh, Loudness, and you know, for me, the main one to move on was Akira Takasaki, I think so you say his name, the guitar player, phenomenal guitar player. And like I said, this is more uh, hard rock with pop elements. You know, kind of like that early uh, Bow Wow and or Bow Bow Wow, Bow Wow. Yeah, Bow Wow was first. Holy crap! <laughs> but anyways, uh, if you watch my channel, watch my videos, you know I got this weird thing for Japanese metal and about crap my pants when this popped up. It was actually funny. The day I found this, I was wearing my loudness shirt. <laughs> so I'm up at the counter and drop this on the counter, and the dude's like. What the hell is this? Do you know what it is? I'm like, uh, yeah, it's a band called Lazy from Japan, of course. Uh, and he's like, really? I was like, uh, yeah, they turned into loudness. And I had my shirt on, and he started laughing. He's like, he's like well, it's wore that on a perfect day, didn't you? <laughs> but really stoked to find that. I've never seen that before. Uh, and actually, the only Lazy album I've ever seen is a couple copies of this in the wild. And the other copies were record shows. Alright, last uh, up. Just showed one earlier uh, in this video, and here's the other. Uh, Funk Inc. Super Funk. Just a uh, killer band, man. Really digging this. I want to get some more. And I was actually talking to Aaron while I was spinning this, and it's uh, instrumental. I haven't got all the way through side two yet. I was... Uh, Halfway through it, something come up and end up slapping something else on the table. But uh, I've liked everything so far up to that point. And it's kind of like a mixture of, uh, it's funk with like a little bit of jazz kind of going on in it. Really cool band. I knew nothing about these dudes. It was kind of like a blind buy. Both these records, they were brand new uh, reissues. Those you know, cheaper ones you get for like $13, $14 or something. So I went ahead and grabbed them. Because, uh, like I said earlier, kind of getting in that, wanting to hear some new funk. And Aaron's been talking about it, and I guess we kind of pumped up about it, and here we are. Totally digging this. Like both albums very much. Alright, I guess uh, that's it for now. I've just been spinning stuff today. I thought I'd show you a few things I've been spinning in the last couple weeks. It was new stuff, old stuff in this video, so. Uh, plenty of new stuff to show. Still picking up you know, stuff online, basically, other than uh, going out last Sunday. I haven't really been out probably at all this year. Just, you know, maybe once a month, if that. Alright, BC, that's it. Uh, hope everybody's having a great weekend. Later.